Okay, hello. Welcome to Saturday Shorts. This is a series that is not recorded on a Saturday, nor is it broadcasting on a Saturday. It is a series of games that I wanted to check out. Some demos, some smaller games. Even though I haven't been, you know, keeping up the same schedule that I had, there's still a lot of, like, weird or interesting looking games that I wanted to check out. And I figured this would be a good place to do it. This is just going to be a random collection of stuff I'm interested in, stuff that looks kind of cool, or demos that are on Steam at the moment. And uh, so, you know, Saturday shorts. <laughs> this game's called Garlic. Why not? I'm going to play Garlic as someone named Walio. Lower the volume a little bit. I mean, you can kind of see why I wanted to play this. All I had to do was see it in motion for a couple seconds, and then I heard it was good. And I was like, okay. I mean, it's no pizza tower, but it's... It, it looks pretty good. <laughs> okay. Um... Okay. Oh, you can angle your dash. It's the power of garlic. Love the animations, love the, um... God, what is the name of the system? Oh. Uh, the Pico or something? Maybe? But yeah, you play as... Whoa. Garlic and, and, and this is a snippet from Mario 2? So you want to climb the sacred, sacred tower, eh? <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I was from Wales for a brief moment. The Cyber Goddess will grant your wish only if you reach the top. That you may lose your life to... Wait. You may lose your life to what? Oh, you may lose your life to... Whoa, danger. W wow, I'm good. Okay, so we got screen wrapped like Kid Icarus. Oh, there's checkpoints. Okay, okay. This is like, um, a thousand and one daggers a little bit. With the checkpoints. But maybe not. I don't know if this is going to be as punishing. Maybe it's a mix of, like, difficult platformer like Celeste or a thousand one daggers. And traditional Wario kind of stuff. In any case, it's very garlicky, and I love the music and the visuals so far. Holy shit. That was cool. Okay. One, two. So far, I am becoming very well acquainted with the mechanics, but I can see it's already five minutes in. I can see this is going to end up being one of those difficult platformers. In a good way, though. But, yeah, I see a lot of Celestes in this. And I never even played Celeste, but I've watched people play it. I think, um, I watched Ross play a good chunk of it, and he seemed to really enjoy it, and I- I liked watching him play it, I wouldn't play it myself. I don't know why. It's not that- I wasn't interested then, I'm not now, but it- I like watching people play it. Oh, 
tight controls, though. I mean, the controls would be, um, that would be a huge disappointment if the game looked good, had these great animations, but played like crap. Doesn't. Really solid, simple game mechanics, easy to understand, and, um, the fluid animations and visuals really fucking fit. You found a garlic coin. It's an old cryptocurrency. Is now the only real money in this new world. <laughs> oh my god. Whoa. I like that face. Oh, that's good. That is good. That is good. Will there be an NFT joke in this game? Is there not already Garlic Coin? I thought there was really something called Garlic Coin. Now I'm second guessing. My memory is terrible. How do you... how do you survive? Uh... Oh! I mean, the platforms do regenerate. God, I had a guitar pedal that would do this noise. Well, it was a multi-effects pedal, but it's... The ya ya pedal. Yeah, it goes ya 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 I hate it. it. This is good. It works for this game, but like, I think Kurt Vile is the only dude I've ever heard, like, actually make that sound effect, get that guitar pedal work. Otherwise, it, I think it's it's a, such a bizarre sound. I don't know what you could use it for without it being a joke. Yeah. So it it is very much. Oof! Oh my God. I hope you have to fight like your arch nemesis is Onion. Onion. Uh oh god, here we go. Here we go. Um, that- that's a thing you can do in this game. You can pose. You can do a WarioWare smooth move. Music is wonderfully weird, and it fits this type of thing very nicely. I learned something very interesting today. I learned that the guitar in Wonderwall, I'm sorry that, but it was just a recommended video, was played on a wall overlooking a field with sheep. And apparently 
Noel Gallagher, and maybe the other members of Oasis too, were so, like, pissed out of their minds, either on alcohol or drugs, that, um, they thought the sheep were spying on them. Like, that they were maybe, like, mechanical sheep with microphones on them. Or regular sheep with microphones. Because, um, the press were, uh, the journalists were, were hounding them and, uh, m treating them like, you know, basically like a commodity they can make money off of. And so they actually, at one point, they thought that the sheep were, uh, spying on them. So that's a new fact. So when you listen to Wonderwall, that's what should go through your mind. I don't think it's- I think it's the guitar at the beginning of the album, which also is playing a, a riff, the, the Wonderwall riff, but is not... I don't know if the actual track was recorded on the wall like for the, the actual song, or just that one... Those, that one section in the very beginning of the album, because the album opens with like... Eight seconds or ten seconds of Wonder Walls. That was that. Is that a moose knuckle? <laughs> this fucking game. Hang on, I need to pause. Reach the top of the sacred tower. I, the cyber goddess, will grant your wish. I know Garlic's Wish. Never seen that love bar in my whole life, son. I wonder what that's about. The Garlic Coin bar, on the other hand, I know it well. I spent all mine, so I'm waiting for welfare. The second floor is waiting for you now. I'll check out a little- oh, is it like reverse Metroid elevator? <laughs> this game is charming. You are Garlic, the onion-headed silent fighter. <laughs> but the road is- the lo uh, but long is the road and strewn with pitfalls. Some other stuff, too. I love this. It's so dumb. That was- that was shit. What the fuck? Is this garlic showing off? Oh, you- wait, why would you get set on fire from a cigarette? That warrior style. Garlic. Honestly, you just need to cook that up and anything smells good. Just just cook a little garlic on the side. Don't even use it. But people will be like, mmm, what are you cooking? It smells great. And you just make up a name for your dish that's not real. But the garlic smell plus the other stuff will make it smell so good that you could throw a couple onions in there too if you want. Like, just like, I mean like a little bit of onion, not like a couple full onion. This is a very, very ridiculous game. And I'm going to play a little bit more of it. I kind of enjoy these plat- ooh. God, like, a thousand one spikes I love, but it gets me very frustrated. But there's something to be said for these harder than tits... ...platformers. It's kind of a good thing to, uh... ...to struggle through them and then feel the sense of reward at the end of it. It's- it's a good challenge. 
You know, what do you want, Bappy Yoshi games and Kirby games your whole life? The answer from me is yes. But, sometimes you need a good challenging platformer to, to brush up your skills. And Kirby games, I will go to war with people that say they, they are only Babby games, because they're not. They are actually hard games later on. They have this, um, Babby exterior, but the, the cream-filled nougat of the Kirby games is, like, really dark and insanely... Whoa. Really dark and insanely well-developed lore. With lots of, like, um... Not, like, really dark, but... Dark enough for a game that looks like that. Kirby has, uh, hard levels. Good challenging boss fights, boss rush mode. All the extra challenges are usually later on in the game, but it's... It's like, okay, you're a gamer? Alright. 100% that Kirby game that came out a couple years ago. Do that one. I mean, you could do it. I would- I would probably still think, like, it's- It's harder to beat. What's the de facto hard game? Is it still Dark Souls? Oof. Yoshi games, however, aside from the first one, and even then, I think Yoshi's Island one of my favorite games, but is it as challenging as it could be? No. And later on, Yoshi games are most certainly not that challenging. Mario games still got it, though. This would be a fun game to watch at a speedrun, uh, competition. Ooh. Or just watch a speedrun of the game, period. I don't know why I said speedrun competition. That's- that's a weird way to phrase it. This looks like Snake Man stage from Mega Man 3. Guarded against the- oh, because I got a heart earlier. Oops. Oh man, gar garlic is in danger. I have one garlic story that I will- I will share that I'm sure many of you know if you've watched for a while, is when I first uh, started cooking with Blue Apron. Because, uh, I- I don't anymore, but I did for a while. And it was mostly okay, sometimes it wasn't, but, um, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, and one of the recipes for this, uh, Mexican dish, it was like, use garlic. You- and it didn't say which gar or how much. So, I'm a dumbass, and I don't know any better. I really didn't know any better, because no one fucking taught me how to cook. And I didn't ever really cook. I mean, hot dogs, maybe. Now I kind of have- Wow, now I have more knowledge of cook, but I put a whole bulb, bulb of garlic into my oven, as opposed to, like, I guess a clove or two, which is what it wanted, and... I... my place smelled like garlic for several days. It was intense, and it was awful, and I... it didn't completely turn me off to garlic, though. That's... that's a good thing. 
As a greasy Italian of questionable Italian descent, I will say that garlic is still pretty. It's in, it's in my blood, not Luigi. And you gotta help us. Faces. The, the, the art. I don't think you can dash when you're injured. Oh, because your power's so low. music. I'm gonna say that garlic should be the next thing. Like, people love that Friday Night Funkin' and everything. I agree. It's cool. I get why it became a thing. Garlic is new thing now. I decree. With my powers of, of, uh, of influenza. Influencer. Influ- I, I am- I am a... I'm an influencer? What's the line from the Soundgarden song? When you, you're feeling Minnesota but looking California? I don't even know how that applies to my situation in any... in any way, shape, or form, but... I just like that line. I'm good. Got lucky there. But not lucky there. this theory that you cannot touch them because they are glowing green. And green, as we all know, which is a very silly thing as someone who is a proponent of, of green. Uh, green, as we all know, is the color of poison and stink. It's like, man, that's not fair. Sometimes it's purple, but, you know, green and purple. Thanks, Doc. Fuck. But yeah, green and purple are the colors of poison and stink. You can stomp on them. It's, it's fine. That's this game's version of the Blarg from Super Mario World! Nice. Oh, man. What? Wait, 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 you get to play a game with your coins? And it's another game within the game? Oh, God. <laughs> it's amazing how, like, games don't even need to be that complicated. But if there's this level of charm and attention to detail and love put into it... You can play simple stuff, and it, it just makes it better. It's, it's, it's good. This reminds me of, like, um, Game Boy Camera a little bit. Why are there weird ghosts? There's, like, ghosts. 
Are they distracting? They're, I mean, they are, but are they supposed to be? It's like a more simple version of Solar Striker on the Game Boy. A game that frustrated me to no end. was good game. Uh oh. It's a it's a, a snootipus. It's a snootadial. See I can invent Pokemon too if I need to. That sucked. He's doing really well up until then. of the non-instant death. It's recoverable. Is this like a mid-boss fight checkpoint? Not that I'm complaining. Or mid boss fight checkpoint. What? How did I say that? Did I say opposite? I just replayed it in my brain, but it was wrong. It's weird. Well, time to uh, put me in the home, I guess. Off. Must concentrate.
Cool. I want to um, at least finish World 2. And then I'll move on to something... Something else. But this is a good game that got very addictive and fun. And you should definitely invest in garlic coin. Oh. That's the second time in the same place. That section's over. Ceiling claw. Oh, oh boy. What a cool mechanic. I think I did reasonably well on that fish. Yeah, I think I did all right. The foundry. This portal leads to dimension. You'll lose quite a bit of power when you enter it, but don't worry. My brother went ahead first and I know for a fact He's doing a great job in there, so he'll probably help you out. Well, this is different. I don't know how much I like this, though, so far. Oh, I was pressing the wrong button. It's right and left, not up and down. Uh, yeah. Is that his brother? Oh man. My brain just isn't gelling with this. I don't even think it's bad, necessarily. I'm just not... Just not processing. It's hard to judge jumps and, and time the uh, dives.
Okay, it, it's better when you start jumping on enemies' heads. That's actually the trick. Yep, it's just about jumping on enemies head. This looks like that's like a fucking mini game from one of the versions of the Mario Brothers in like Mario 3 All-Stars, I think. It's a bit obscure, but there was like a pipe that shot flames and coins. Anyway, I I could play this more and I maybe I'll come back to it at some point, but garlic. It's really good. I knew I would like it, but I didn't know I would like it this much. Garlic. Okay, I paused. So if I teleported to this next game, it was because I wanted to make sure everything was set up before I got it in here. Now listen, this game is called Animal Shelter <laughs> Simulator. So, okay. Uh, it's a demo. It started in 4K mode. Imagine needing a 4K monitor for this. Um, and then it also was, I was giving me a lot of problems with capturing it, but I got it now. So anyway, the magic of pre-recording, this is demo version. I, I like dog. Dogs is, is nice. I had, yeah, I like dogs. This is nice. I like ducks. I'll have to show you my, I have a, a little uh, waterfowl video that you may enjoy. Just a, a new duck dropped. Is what I'm gonna say. There's a new duck at the place I go to. I don't know who brought this duck there, but it was a little discouraging, uh, maybe, that someone just brought the duck. But I'll show you the video. It's a cute duck. Also, the, the baby geese... Oh, these frame rates suck. Anus. I guess we're leaving V-Sync off. Oh, what is this game's, like, problem? That's fine. As long as you can get the idea. It just looks really weird and choppy. But anyway, um, I'll show you the baby geese as well. I have a video. They've gotten big. I'm gonna try V-Sync now. You know what? I'll try FPS limit 60. Yet, still something is weird about this. I guess my 3080 can't run Animal Shelter Simulator. Okay, so there's uh, kennels, and you can put your animals in here and stuff. Here's here's the dog. So you run a rescue shelter, and you just wash dogs, and you feed them and do tricks? Alright. Well, I'm ready to wash the dog now. How, how do I put the dog in the washing machine? Oh. Being a sponge fucking sucks. Garden hose and dryer. Oh, I love when games try to be real. Listen, if this is going to be called Simulator, I, I want the dog to close its eyes when I'm shooting water directly into them. Not only that, but another good thing Maybe, um, you know, I don't know if animals are all that happy to be hosed down. Not, maybe not all of them.
Wow, I have a clean dog now. I don't know if this is how it actually works at places like this. I just have no idea. But we did our good deed for the day. Like any other living creatures, cats and dogs must eat and drink. Wait, what? Is that- is that what happens? Is that- Oh... Azor Azai Reborn. It's an old uh, Game of Thrones reference. Remember when that went nowhere? Some people are shitting on George R. R. Martin, you know, because of the reveal that he's... Not the reveal, we all knew this, but... Poop bags. That he's uh, writing lore for Elden Ring. What I think people don't understand... Not everyone, but a couple people. Is that... Seasons 6 and 7 and 8 of Game of Thrones is not George R. R. Martin's writing. The dude is genuinely a great author. I read... I'm not a huge reader, and I was addicted to reading his books. He's... I think he's a very good writer for the type of schlock that I like. It's not even schlock, it's just great. I think if he's just doing lore, and then Miyazaki's building on that, I think it's gonna turn out really good. Hey, I'm a computer. Ah, oh, why? Oh, you can't take the pets unless you have the full version. Two hundred and fifteen dollars for one food and one water. It's like Thief Simulator, but dogs and cats. Wait for a drone with your purchases. Well, that's a good way to avoid, like, adding people to the game. We don't have drone delivery quite yet, or if- whoa, if that's a fast fucking drone. If we do have drone tech that can de deliver packages, I don't think it's as widely available as as that, nor is it as quick as five seconds later. Now, drone strikes are a different story. We, we got the tech. F five seconds, no problem. <laughs> we gotcha. But packages? No, we need meat to deliver those packages. You can't jump, which is a problem. I'll tell you why it's a problem. If you could jump in this game, you might be able to, like, glitch out of boundaries. So it's a problem for me because I like glitching out of boundaries. I like how, how much food I just wasted. Want some dog soup? I mean, dog food soup? I mean, dog food soup? Alright, it's time to play ball with the dog. Oh shit, you get a lightsaber. You can use a beam. Oh, I should have chose cat. It 
It's like, just like real life. Your doggy is ready for adoption, but you need to create an ad. <laughs> I'm gonna need a slow-mo of that. I, I like how this ball leads the dog to break its neck. Hang on a second, Azor. Please, let me- let me just try this one more time. Yeah, there's some wonky dog physics going on here. Hell yeah! Okay, we need to buy a camera, so we can get this dog adop adopted. Eight hundred dollar camera. All right. I mean, it's good. It's gonna be a good one. I mean, not like top of the line, top of the line, but like you know, for consumer grade, I think an eight hundred dollar camera is is pretty good. Mine was about that, years ago. We're talking 10 years ago. I got a Canon T3i DSLR. And it was good then, still pretty good. But now you could just t use your phone and the cameras are, are amazing. This is an unnecessary expense. That's not how you take a picture. This- there's a market for this game somewhere. Like, don't get me wrong, I like animals, like pets and stuff, but... I guess this is the market is you want to do this, but you you are not able to do this as for a living, right? That that's the best I got, because this is nowhere near <laughs> realistic in the way you throw the ball at the dog's face. You don't get the tactile dog action, you know, like of actually playing with a real dog, which is is nice and stress relieving. This just makes me feel stressed out, especially with these crusty frames. I just feel like, not only is it not a real dog, and I'm acutely aware of that, but I'm also being a very grumpy. Cool bladder meter. Okay, so it says, take your, a photo, pick up the photo and scan it using the scanner. But where's the fo where's the photo? I'm like I just had weird, like, existential dread trying to find the photo. Like, I went into, a, like, a weird place in my brain. It happens. But I don't know where the photo is. Like, is it there a menu? Like, I'm looking for menu buttons and items and, and, like... It says, pick up the photo and scan it by... Did it? Wait. Wait a minute. Is it possible? I can't believe this game... Like, this game just put me in a dark place. It only lasted for like 30 seconds, but somehow... Dog Shelter Simulator, like... Sent my brain into a fucking weird spiral, like a panic spiral. 
I'm not gonna go into full detail because I myself don't fully understand it. I don't think I could go into detail. And I'm not even really being hyperbolic either. A little bit. Well... I mean, you'll have to make that... <laughs> that judgment call yourself. Okay, good. Um, now we need to make an ad for this dog. Why does the dog have to be like that, though? Animals in shelter, then click more info, find new home. Gold soul for everyone who loves to play with animals. Full of energy, always ready for any activity, and so cuddly you won't regret. Besides, whom would after... Whom would after petting such a lovely fluff ball? A good dog. Good dog. Hopefully someone will write soon. Yeah, I'll take the dog. I'll take the do I'll take the dog, please. I want to adopt dog named Azor. Katrina McMahon. I want the pet to be happy. I want the pet not to be aggressive. Thank you for your answer. Please visit our shelter to pick up I want to write my own email. I want to be like, all right, listen, I have a website I need you to go to. All right. It's a goat adoption site. I just need you to check it out. You can see goats there. Now, if you just go to the following address, it is www.goats. Oh, sorry. I think there was a technical glitch. Are we back? Yeah, we're back. Good. Okay. Uh, Kat Katrina's here for the... Um, For the dog. Well, one more for old time's sake. Hey, boy. Yeah, you throw that. I like, that's good. Yeah, go mental. Okay. Well, we got you a home. I wonder if Katrina is modeled. Or if it's a generic human. It's like human silhouette. That's good. That's a good way to avoid having, you know. Please step away from the vehicle. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. I wanted to go there, too. I, I, I mean, I, again... It's like so many other simulator games I've played over the years. It definitely has an audience. I am always shocked to find out how much some of these games actually sell. It's a cat named Kitty. Alright, now, I need you to make an incision above the, the left aorta. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure someone out there who can correct me and tell me. Actually, Vin, you see, the aorta is not left nor right. It is apolitical. Ah, oh, tick. Animal does not seem to be hurt. It's good. Healthy kitty. I just want to play with the laser pointer. Not for the cat, but for me. I love laser pointers.
My first laser pointer I got in Wildwood, New Jersey. You see, it keeps coming back to Wildwood. And it was, I guess, 1995 or six or seven, and laser pointers were huge and they were everywhere. They were the prize of every, like, spin the wheel. There was, um, crane games where you could win little gold or silver laser pointers. And they had, like, um... They had things on there where you could make, like, things. Like, shapes and, like, a dollar sign. Or a naked lady. Okay, I don't think there was that. Maybe there was, I don't remember. But, it was fun. And... One of my fondest memories is going back to the hotel and, like, looking at the street and there was, like, you know, 15 laser pointer dots all in the street just doing circles. I was like, wow, me and 15 other idiots have the same exact idea. I never felt more connected to another human being or more other human beings in general until the internet. And that wore off quickly and turned into get off the internet. But it took a couple of years for that to happen. I want to go back to laser pointer communication. Like, that feeling of connectedness was even better. But nostalgia tends to overwrite rationality, so... I guess you could adopt a dog if you want. Animal Shelter Simulator. Oh, it's crusty, alright. But it, it is... it does what it says. It do. So, let me take a look at Chernobyl Liquidators Simulator Demo. I've already played a Chernobyl Liquidator game. <laughs> Loud. But this one appears to be... This one appears to be more advanced in many ways. Why are these resolutions on these- these games always starting, like, above? Like, well above what I like. It's very strange. I mean, sure, let's check it out. So we've gone from garlic, haha, -ha funny platformer of skill to adopting animals to fucking Chernobyl. Talk about a slice of life. And people get bored in this world. Look how much variety there is. Hey Jabba, even I get bored sometimes. Ah, oh, yes, comrades. The thing about the show Chernobyl that I, I had no idea about was how stubborn that government was in regards to, like... Nope, can't tell anyone. And so many more people got hurt as a result. Had no idea it was like that. But then again, I was... Was I even born yet? What year was Chernobyl? I forgot. 84, 85, 86. For me, it was just an event that happened that everyone worked together to take care of. When I was a kid, that's just how everything worked. Oh, we're all humans, we're gonna work together and figure it out. And it's like... Nah, no. Okay, I was... 11 years, 11 months old. Three point six. No, it's just 3.6, Ronkin. Set out for the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. 
the third and fourth block there, the roof's on fire. Is that where that song came from? God, I hope not. Are there people there? Yes, people. You know the song Smoke on the Water? That's a song about uh, a, a thing that happened that was bad. And I forgot exactly what it was, but... It's worth Googling if you have any interest in that sort of thing. I will Google after this so I can remember what it was I learned about that song. You know, the first song everyone learns to play on guitar, that one. Hey everybody, on this episode of What Makes This Song Great... Here's, uh, smoke on the water. Colleagues, something serious has happened at the power plant. There is a massive outbreak of fire all around the Block 4 building, including the top roofs. Obviously, the structure has partially collapsed. As we speak, the dispatcher is calling all units there, but we're first on the scene. We need to find out what's going on, and to approach the building, you must break through the fire. Use the hose connected to the cylinder on your box. It will allow you to get to the power plant with... Okay. Be careful, colleagues. These fires are hotter than we expected. Handling this situation relies on us, though, so don't forget about your safety. Carefully watch your steps. Light up the headlamps on your helmets for better lighting. It's also been confirmed that this action has the respiratory hazard level 4, meaning those DP gas masks that we all love so much are a must for everyone. Better have some bitter taste in your mouth than burning your lungs into a crisp. Remember not to run out of water at all times. It's the best and often only weapon against the flames. Despite the damage, the facility should have the high pressure emergency water supply system still intact. Ooh, maybe the put the settings too high because it's getting crusted. I mean the game definitely has um Nice visuals. Did you get a little burned or otherwise injured, brother? If it's nothing too serious, just use those stimulants that were supplied to us some time back. They sure have quite a few. Oh, you know. Just inject yourself with some strange drugs and keep fighting the fire, comrade. What is in this syringe? Meth, comrade. Meth. Good. You fetched yourself one of these. As always, it will surely prove more than handy. Okay, you're where we need you. You're in the mobile unit today. This large tank you are carrying everywhere on your back is a testament to that. We are now putting all our forces into fighting the huge fires on front of the collapsed northern wall of Block 4. These don't give up easily, but I am sure we'll eventually manage to contain them. In the meantime, we need you to enter the fire area from the western side, get all the way towards the block's wall, and put down the smaller flames lingering there. This is a dangerous task, Homer. But it's not the first one like that for Now, put your gas mask and go with it. Oh. <sighs> I'm sneezing from fake smoke. Do you smell that metallic taste? Something strange is going on. Kibenko fainted. If the Tenko is barely standing, there is something very wrong with this fire. Watch out for those shining fragments lying all around. Oh, 
that's 30 years off this dude's life. Okay. Probably don't want to get burned. Uh, wow, okay, you just... I guess you just, like, fucking die up here. Why wow, you can't even really get that close at all to this shit. I didn't want to do that. Oh man, I'm a why did I do that? I'll skip through quick. I forgot how to use the fire hose if there even is a way to do it without having to press a button at it. But I'm going to skip through the dialogue. I'm I'm sorry about that. I'm a dumbass. I was like main menu, that's the options menu, right? So I can see the controls. It's not I mean, truthfully, most of what was done up until that point was just tutorials and watching that intro cutscene. So hopefully, now I have my health back, at least. Okay. Uh, this time I want to just see what button there is. I'm sp this is... This is very typical me. I feel like a dumb idiot again. Something serious has happened at the power Hose plant. tool is E, there is, is one. Power. Be careful, colleagues. Well, you know what? Maybe it is a good thing I did that. Because... Colleagues, I was struggling to find the button. I think I would have found it eventually. It's like I read- I read through every other tutorial except the first and most important one. By the way, if you find this subject fascinating and you haven't watched HBO's, uh, Chernobyl show, just do yourself a favor and- and do that, because it's... It's intense, but it's really fascinating, it's really well done. I was one of my favorite, like, limited series I've ever seen, I think. Maybe I'm overselling it a little bit, but I, I kind of... I kind of do believe that it was, it was that good. Of course, the NPC hoses don't actually do a goddamn thing. Okay, could do some, uh... Can use some steroids directly into my fucking wrist vein. Comrade, we still don't know what happened, but it appears that the fire has caused significant damage to the building's structure. Even though we did quite a good job evacuating everyone, some technicians have been cut off in the attic, just below the huge cooling chimney at the very top. The power plant's crew has already attempted to reach them from Block 3rd's site, but were unable to succeed. 
This is where you come in, Command. We all know you're the best at getting through damaged spaces. Oh. So we need you to climb the main building all the way up to the cooling stacks roof. Along the way, go through any obstacles using all means necessary. When on the place, assess the evacuation routes and make contact. We'll plan how to get you all out. Most of the block four building has been evacuated, but you may find people you will have to help. Start by collecting some tools that we've prepared and proceed to climb to the roof of this building there. From there, find your way to the top. You'll be on your own up there, and it's going to be tough. But this is what we've been training for. Good luck. Okay, thanks. I like how, you know, the dude's like, oh, you're the best at this. Even within, like, a semi-realistic depiction of being a liquidator at Chernobyl, you are still the trope. It seems like they have been in our unit forever, and have saved more lives than all of them. The trope of being the chosen one, like, the, the player being the best of everyone. Still here. Man, these these uh, visuals are very good. It's Unreal Engine, I would imagine. Whoa! I say, getting frame locked for a moment. Yeah, the visuals are good, but it, it gets like frozen. Every now and then, it just like stutters, locks up. Maybe it's, I mean, maybe my settings are too high, I don't know. I think the, the way this game advertises itself on uh, Steam is no mutants to shoot just exactly what happened at Chernobyl. It's, you know, like a... a fairly, uh, accurate. No, not too accurate, but an, more accurate than, like, say, Stalker or the four or five other Chernobyl games at, uh, E3 this year. And even so, just depicting the events as happened is still pretty horrifying. visual quality down a little bit, see if it's still... Yeah, it's still a little crusty. Maybe something's wrong with my computer today, where I can't run these games the way... Oh. Now what? Oh, I guess I'll just die. Let them deal with it. Okay, I think I see the gameplay loop a bit. Oh, 
wonder if this is enough to put out this fire. This is a big ass fire. Yep, it was enough. Yeah, this is all right. As far as simulators go. This is one of the, um... The more interesting ones. It's not just driving a bus. Or making a pizza, which... That one's kind of cool. The water... Could... Water, you need to replenish a little too frequently, in, in my lazy opinion. <coughs> it begins. Out of water. Oh, there's fire on the top there. And there's fire over there. There's fire over there. Some hot fucking fire. I'm gonna die before this task is completed. Yep. Ah. Oh. It's kind of just quicker to die than to go back and get the water and, like, you get your health back and shit. Does the water not go through this gate? It does. For anyone hoping for wacky content, there's a time and a place. I just feel like this, this is not the time for wacky content. I'm content not making wacky content over a Chernobyl game. Unless there were- there were mutants, as discussed earlier. Cooling stack base. I am confident that you will succeed, brother. 
Okay, long jumps, shift. Probably want to get rid of this fire first, right? Yeah. I was gonna cut this a little short because I don't know how much of this there is and you kind of get the idea of it, but I kind of now want to just see what happens. Just give it a little bit more time. Not too long ago, I played another one that was a little bit more dry than this. What I mean by that is, uh, <laughs> you weren't putting out fires, A, and B, it was less video gamey, and there was the whole elephant's foot thing, and I, I forget the name of it, but it was, it was fucking intense. It's on full sauce somewhere. Probably just type full sauce Chernobyl. Which is a weird sentence in and of itself. Uh, when's the blood gonna start being coughed up? I didn't need to press that. I was looking for a crouch button, and I pressed that by accident. Yeah, bear force. Near the near the fire yet. Whoa. More crusty frames. And this is all a demo. It's a lot of content for a demo, I think. Oh, that's weird. Uh, but yeah, no, I think this is- this is kinda cool. That show must have really inspired a lot of people to make more Chernobyl shit. So if this is the end of the demo, I would humbly request that there would be a skip opening sequence option. Oh. Oh, those sounds. Now, I wonder if you end up playing as a new person entirely. Oh, no. I love the sound effects of the syringe. I was gonna say, if the demo ended here, you know what? Even if the demo doesn't end here, wherever it ends... Like, I think pretty much 
every demo only could benefit from saving your like data so that way when you get the full game you could just resume where you left off that's why i got hooked on dragon quest 11 obviously different type of game entirely but i don't think i'd want to do all the the climbing again That was weird. Use your Chris Redfield strength. Come on, you got this. Radiation hitting plaid levels. Oh, you know what? There is an update to my video card that I haven't downloaded. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but it could just be unoptimized games. Because, like, why would this not work well? But Pong is just fine. There's even, like, logs along. <laughs> it is very video gamey. Oh, it's Dyatlov, that guy. It's not great. Not bad. Okay, never mind. I don't know what the hell's going on there. Probably gonna stop in the next five minutes. This could use, like, even the way that the, the first person... Ooh, that's, that's a little crusty. It could use a little bit of polish. I mean, it's a demo. It's not out yet. But... A little bit of polish. And this, this could be something really special. I thought what was going to happen was the liquidator dies, and then you have to play as another liquidator. Which is pretty much the other game I played. Five. Seven. Six. The code. Alex. One, nine, one, six, three, six. The code. The music industry code. This isn't where the objective is. Something- yeah, this game is very weirdly, like, jittery. Not even- I'm not just talking about, like, the frame rates, but, like, the controls, the, the first person, like, movement, and looking around. It's, it's a thing that could be improved upon. That's kind of cool looking.
Definitely don't have enough water for that. It's got the pace of, of a first-person shooter a little bit. It even kind of reminds me a little tiny bit of Half-Life. Not too much. But just enough. here, okay. It's kind of hard to put down, too, because the sense of, um, advance... Whoa! The sense of advancing is, is quite good. So that's just the pace. I don't know why I said sense of advancing, but... <laughs> I think I just teleported though, that, that's... A bit weird, a bit weird that. Large generator nearby. Okay, so what gear puzzles do I have to solve here in order to get into that room? How, how Bioshockian is this going to be? Generous ledge grabbing. Crowbars really are the answer to a lot of life's problems. That and just eating ice cream out of the tub. While in the tub. I, I actually did that. I, like, I... Over the past several months, I have eaten ice cream directly out of its container. Not in the tub. And no, I didn't feel that great about it. But sometimes you just gotta eat a lot of fucking ice cream. hole in the roof where the helicopter flew over and then crashed because the radiation was just so intense just the whole story of Chernobyl is, is just fascinating and, and fucked up and it makes me s sad for those people but also you know some of this was like really preventable I kind of want to see what that hole looks like, so I'm going to get over there. So I can spit in this hole. Didn't Luigi say that?
am I doing? I'm just now conditioned to follow certain colors as they represent things that I... like places I should go. Which is good, that's good. I love that game design. I like- that's very helpful. Like, this color represents... go that way. That color represented death. Oh, this was here the whole time. I didn't even notice it. Good. Did I really just fall in? God. God, come on! You go so fast. After a certain point, you just go fast. Oh my god. So that just happens every now and then. Okay, good. I made the jump this time. Fucking Christ on a on a stick. Oh god, it burns. It's not that the platforming is all that painful, but you just gotta be very precise with your jumps. And I was not, several times. And then I also just went too fast, several times. Please do not, I want, do not die, do not die, do not die, do not die. Okay, that was a scripted cutscene. That was a sequence that was supposed to happen. We've come too far to stop now. <laughs> Which is uttered before most bad decisions.
Okay, frame... We'll just jitter all over the place, frames. Still, I don't know how much this could sustain a full game. I mean, I could see this being like a two or three hour experience with logs and, you know... Like, covering the history of the event. I could see it... You know, taking this formula a little bit further. Of the jumping around fighting fires and, and like, going through the plant. But... I just don't know if I personally would be willing to play a game like this for more than an hour or two. Three at most, if it's really compelling. And compelling it is. Three point six Ronkin. Yeah, I'm assuming you just play in different parts of the plant as a different operator, or a different, um, liquidator, rather. Jesus fucking Christ. And these people knew what they were getting into, but they knew that they had to do this. And if they didn't, a lot of other lives would be lost. It's a fascinating, fucked up event in our history, and uh, I hope I hope we've learned from it in various ways. And I've also enjoyed this game. I think it, it is a, it's a really good way to do it. That said, it kind of gets a little bit weird for me when I see sleazy car trader simulator to the right of this very serious game. But no, the tone was done really well. It was done really well. The tone was good. Gameplay needs a little bit of work. It, it needs to control more like a Half-Life. And less like... Um... Ass life. But... <laughs> but... I don't know. What does a full game of that look like? I'm going to play a game that was at E3 because, well, why the hell not? Devolver showed it, and uh, I got a key for it, and I said to myself, do I want to play this? Maybe. I mean, I got the key for it, and that, that sweetens the deal. Um, It's called a uh, video game, which I'll tell you in a second, even though it was right there. But I'll tell you even more what the name of this game was. Why are the resolutions weird? There it is. Phantom Abyss. Thought that was what it was called. You have one chance to claim the relic. I've mentioned this concept is interesting to me. 
because you you apparently only have it's asynchronous. You have one chance to get the thing, and then that's it. Just the one. We got some tearing. Some motion blur off. Desync on. Yeah. Don't hit apply. I'm used to most games just doing the thing for you. With V-Sync. Yeah, something something's wrong. Like every game I'm playing that looks that's 3D tonight is is stuttering. Some video card. Let me just increase the volume a little bit. So far, um, from what I've seen of this game, it has a mix of both good and, like, kind of cheap-ish production values. Oh, that's okay. I guess, you know, a concept like this, also, you have to be, like, very committed to. You know, to make it work. And, uh... I think it's... oh, okay. Good, good for me. I think it's kind of a risk to do something like this and put, like, the highest level of budget into it. I promise you, I'm not going to claim the relic. It's like Legends of the Hidden Temple. <laughs> actually has to, like, hit the spot. There's a cooldown, though, so you can't just go whipping all over the damn place. Pretty decent gameplay, though, so far. But my one relic, uh, my one chance to get the relic is, is going to be a failure. Well, not this, this relic is easy. I'm talking like the real deal relic. Only one person in the world will complete this temple. Well done, mortal. Speaking of this voice and whips and temples, Indiana Jones, uh, there were pictures of Harrison Ford at 79 years old or so, 
on the set of Indy 5. And yeah, he looks old, but he has dots on his face, so they're going to probably de-age him. Which I'm a little worried about. But then again, Indy 5 should not even exist. Neither should 4. I'll just do the thing. Ghosts are players from the past. So it saves what you did and then makes you a ghost in someone else's temple. One explorer has died here. That's it? Takes some of the fun out of it. Oops. I'm like failing at obvious shit. <laughs> All right, now two people have died in this temple. I didn't see the other phantom. Maybe no one's playing this game yet. I think it just came out like today. First death hurts the most. Death is expected. The other phantoms in that temple died just like you. Do not give up. Go to the portal again. As interesting as this game seemed, I didn't know if I, I was, uh... Oh, there's probably other things that you can collect, like, not just a whip. Um, I wasn't sure this would be good for its own segment. Because I don't really have that much interest in playing this for, like, two hours or an hour. Five explorers have died here, okay. There's the other phantoms. I have an itch, but I can't scratch it right now. And... Bottomless Pit. Yeah, I don't do a whole lot of, um... Observing my surroundings when I play this, it seems. But they get you back into it fast. So I thought you could only play this game one time. Okay, two explorers have died here. Um, which would make... A lot less sense as a game 
Like I said, Robot Loves Kitty, that developer, they were attempting to do something similar to this. And I don't know how far they got with the concept, but it, it seemed like even just trying to wrap my head around it, of like a game that you play one time to get all the glory like a game show. And then that's it, you're done, you can't play it again. It wasn't like this where you could just go through endless temples. I like that that was that, but in reverse. That's kind of cool. Shrines such as this one allow me to bless you. Approach. Well, I don't have any money for that, but that's interesting. It's a spelunky kind of vibe going on here, too. Spits poison gas for gas bombs. Oh, these temples are, are long. Like, they have loading zones. It is kind of cool to see someone else's, like, ghost running through the temple. That's disorienting, but I guess... ...for what it does to you. I guess it should be. Look, it saves you from a shitty fall, so... This is actually better than I was expecting. Not that I was expecting, like, bad stuff, because Devolver usually publishes decent... Whoa, what? What was that noise? The Devolver usually publishes decent enough shit. But I wasn't sure about this one in particular, because I was like, alright, well, you run around. How much do you actually get to play? The answer is, it's a good bit. I like the whip mechanic. You can really judge your jumps, though. Mario 64 flashback from this room. Can't, can't get a blessing. Don't have the money. Five gas bombs. That was the mask defiler. We have any other ghosts? Nope. I'm breaking new ground here.
What's on fire? Zero out of ten. Whoa. Okay, I'm not dead yet. Yeah, hot spikes. Yeah, I just ran into the spikes sideways. I mean, unless the spikes are like a thousand degree glowing hot spikes. Not sure why I died there, but yeah, just don't touch the spikes. Devouring Rage. Four explorers have died here. Okay, so treasure doesn't carry over. I just noticed that from temple to temple. You need to collect it all there. Very Mega Man. First person was a weird choice for this, though. Usually you, usually you want to do your platforming in, in third person. Doesn't turn me off to the game. I kind of like the first person with the whip. Devouring Rage hunts you down, moves at three milliseconds. Three meters per second? <laughs> Why would milliseconds be... Unit of measurement of movement, rather. Oh, it's this fanboy attack person again. Kind of see that the rooms are like made into chunks. Whoa, that was almost bad. A series of interconnected chunklets. down here. Nothing. Faster now.
I have enough to buy one of them wacky blessings. So you can't whip two times in a row in the air. You have to land before the whip regenerates. What have I done? Oh, I didn't even see that! You fucker! Well, that was... shit, but I'm still alive. Fuck you. But I didn't even know that was a... try again. It, it's addictive. And it's pretty good, and I'm kind of curious to see what it would be like with a ton of phantoms. I mean, the game is still barely out, so there's, it seems like four or five seem, is the most we'll, we're gonna get today. But, like, what, what's it gonna be like when there's like a hundred? Is Could there be a hundred? Or like thirty even? I wonder if the ghost players activate stuff, though. I'm just not sure if they do. Like, I think they do. Or maybe the things go off on their own? It's, it's kind of hard for me to tell. Okay, devouring rage again. Probably do need to slow down a little bit. And I was going to try to whip my way up and out of danger. Didn't really work out that great. A lot of little mini heart attacks in this game. Loads of them. Case in point. I want to see what a blessing does. I wonder if it just restores health. But yeah, I do not have the money for that.
Oh, we got some other phantoms here. Uncommon key. It, loot crates. Surprise mechanics. That's what it seems like to me. Maybe for, like, player skins or something, or different items. Oh, God. Whip skins? I don't know. Cal Whip Skins Jr. Yep, made a baseball joke. My knowledge pool reaches from UFOs to baseball. Some, a little bit of baseball. Mostly just Star Trek, though. Oh, that's rough. Especially when you got something chasing you, that's not good. Well, that was fun for a minute. Cratered on floor three. Your loot has been captured. Challenge friends to beat the temple and release it. That's okay. I mean, I'm getting a little bit better each time. I think this is a surprisingly cool game. I'm going to come back to it. Because I want to see what it's like when the game is actually... Like, out. And I don't know what the loot is. But it has, um, a, a, an interesting concept. I, I will, uh, I will say, Devolver has an eye for talent. I, I know it might be kind of cool to hate them now because their presentations are very obvious. I didn't dislike their presentation this year. I thought it was... It, it was a little much at times, but it wasn't anywhere near as obnoxious as the previous couple years. And... There were some good games. Truly, some good games shown, and... Or at least, they looked good to me. And I feel like... I'll do one more. I feel like they have the potential to really grow their their thing and continue adding like these these really interesting indie games um to their library and then build a bunch of franchises like carry on carrion carrion like finding good indie devs with interesting indie games fuck And using that as, like, kind of a base model, and then saying, Alright, yeah, you know what? We'll fund this weird idea that you have. Because we like your idea. We can make it work. We can make it a little bit more... You know, we can make it a little bit more polished. We could put some money behind it. I'm rambling, but you know what I mean, I think. I think that's a good business model for creativity. But not everything they publish do I love. But I mean, even Nintendo has stuff I don't play. Okay, I'm doing pretty fucking rotten this time around. I don't think I'm going to be completing this one. Huh. 
Though, it would be great to see what this blessing shit is, finally. Cannot afford, but if I just survive a little bit more... I want to find Henry Hudson's compass. Wasn't there a Legends of the Hidden Temple reboot? In the works, but it was like a weird animated show or something? fucking dopey like that, that... It's just, how do you do that show without it being a bizarre game show? Gotta wait for them spikes. <sighs> Thank God the whip has a little bit of wiggle room with, um... Like, accuracy. Because I have been missing... I have not been particularly precise with it. Chance to avoid damage or longer whip range. I'm gonna go for longer whip range, even though I could use the damage thing because I'm almost dead. But, oh well. So that's what that is. That's what the blessings are. Found another loot. Becoming more familiar with this game's thing. Two paths. All the traps in particular you have to learn. Caverns. Caverns are a journey for another time. Descend the stairs and bring me that relic. Okay, can I get a blessing? Heal. Hell yeah. Okay, we're, we're getting closer to the relic. Is there a fucking boss fight or something? Yeah. Uh. 
Jesus. <laughs> oh, man. What a waste of a heal. I see. Oh, that's a good thing. It teleports you back. Waterfall, but reverse this time. Despite that, God, you just have to learn all this shit, I guess. Despite that, this game won me over. It's not, like, the best thing I've ever played, but it's a lot better than I thought it would be. And the addiction is real. So, not bad, Phantom Abyss. I will come back to this at some point and check it out when there's more people playing. Okay, so I wasn't sure I was going to do this, but I want to check this out, too, real quick. Um, I could always come back to it. I'm, you know, not really sure how much more I would like to uh, record tonight. But I will show you something called The Total Gallery. And this was actually made by someone who... I think someone who watches my stuff. So, we're going to need some music accompaniment. But yeah, this is Jonathan Hunter who made this. So, a music <laughs> accompaniment, algo music. And the infinite monkey theorem states that a monkey with a typewriter in an infinite amount of time would be able to produce any text by randomly hitting keys in succession. Monkey is meant to represent an abstract device that produces an endless random sequence of letters and symbols. The Total Gallery is an attempt to implement this theorem by creating images instead of text. The program uses a pseudo-random number generator to decide how an image is created, a width and height are chosen, a base is chosen to initially fill the image, then the program can choose to draw a random number of primitives and apply effects to the image. This can be seen as giving the monkey MS Paint instead of a typewriter. So it looks like you have seed, preset, um, we can try, oh I see, presets are like the size and everything, um... Random colors, gradient, solid, okay. I'm just gonna see what it looks like. I haven't really fucked with this. Ah. That's art. Ah. We can get this up at the MoMA. The Museum of Modern Art. It, trust me, it won't be a way to evade taxes. It won't, it'll be a way to enjoy beautiful art. Like, maybe this is the next Red Vox album cover. I can't even pronounce this, but I can pronounce this peep! <laughs> Look at the fucking, there's like a face in there. That's pretty good stuff. I want to see what the GBC one looks like. Ah, I see. Yeah, you can set your uh, limited parameters. Whoa, these gradients are sick. Put 
awkward. <laughs> yeah, it's more that AI shit. Whenever I get a chance to do weird AI shit, as long as there's something new and interesting happening in the world of AI generation, you know, I'd, I'd be willing to check it out. Also, AI Dungeon is always great. And the truth is, I would come back to AI Dungeon. I don't know when, but we don't know where they came from. I don't know when I would do AI Dungeon, but I, I am certainly not done with it entirely. Like, yeah, sure, this is a different format for me, and I'm able to record without a chat, pre-record stuff. That doesn't mean I can't do some AI dungeon with my mods or with, like, prompts that I write down uh, ahead of time. And if I ever do return to streaming, like I said a, a bunch in the past, I, you know, people have been very kind and very helpful in regards to wanting to know if I'm doing okay, Take your time, you know, stream if you want to. You could stream if you want to. You could leave your friends behind. D. But I just don't have an answer. Um, at the very least, this summer, special events only, as I've said before. But if I do return to streaming, the schedule will never be the same. And I could do a mix of pre-recorded content and streaming stuff pre-record a couple things one day, release them, do a stream one day. At the moment, still no plans to return to streaming, even part-time. Like Indiana Jones saying part-time. So, I, I just don't know if I will. Uh, but I can't... I can't say for sure. But thinking about what would be good for me as I get older, you know, continue to focus on music, do some pre-recorded stuff, maybe once in a while do a stream you know that's that sounds okay just kind of see where the wind blows really see where things go and how I feel about stuff and you know my uh, disconnect from from wanting to be too online and with too many people either blowing smoke up my butt or uh, extreme hatred which by the way there is an in-between and that's that's a good I think somewhere let's say 75% I like the streamer is a good percentage I like that this is my brain while listening to this and generating these images That's my brain right now. Oh. I don't know if this is going to get claimed, but I'm going to show you something. Um, something super cool in, in just a moment. But we'll generate a couple more images. I haven't seen your baby from Ringo yet, though. It's close. Cool. I wonder if there's any particular seeds that are just, like, guaranteed something really good. Cool concept. I think, um, the monkeys definitely need to learn how to use MS Paint better. Carl Pilkington does not understand the infinite monkey thing. You can Google Carl Pilkington, infinite monkeys, and you would have some really interesting results. He does not understand the theory or concept of the infinite monkeys on the typewriters writing the complete works of Shakespeare. It is a weird concept, to be fair, but... I think Carl, in particular, just can't... He's like, but how would the monkeys know English? It's like, that, that, that's okay, Carl. We, we don't have to try to understand this concept. Well, there you go, everybody. Thank you for watching this. Uh, this has been an interesting series of games. Including some AI. A little, little Saturday stream for you. You know, something to, uh, catch up 
with a variety of games that I've wanted to uh, uh, take a look at. That said, there's a couple more, and as I accumulate more, I will, um, you know, make note. And I also have a goose game that I'd like to show you. And when I do, I will show you a video of the ducks and geese, because it's, it's good content, truthfully. You know what else is good content? This, which John may have to cut because it may get muted, but... Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for continuing to be here very much. Uh, I can't really express it bit in words because they, they fail and they're not really good and the words are bad, but, you know, cheers to you. Thanks. And, um, let me, let me show you how I feel sometimes. This is, you know what, since words are, are not so great, usually music does a better job at expressing emotion and not algo music. Because that's just... What is that? What is that emotion? I don't know what that is. Confusion? Instead, I'll show you this. Take care. And, uh... Best wishes to all of you out there. I wish I was crewmate. You're such a good crewmate. But I am sus. I'm imposter. What the hell am I doing here? I don't belong here.